Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now the object of this Boring Objects podcast is for me just to talk about a particular object and in the process you can relax and if you want fall asleep. That's it really. It's I guess a more boring version of my Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast. So expect to be bored. And while you're listening to me talking about in this case it's going to be about printers now you might think how how on earth could this this weird man on this podcast how on earth could he possibly make the subject of printers boring <laughs> well it's possible I might give it a go so I'll just tell you about printers that I've used in the past. I've actually got a printer here. And I bought it probably about two years ago. And the reason for it is because I intended to transcribe my podcasts because I've got thousands of recordings, so I want to, well, I am in the process of doing that. But back then, um, I decided I was going to transcribe and then print out the text and then edit, you know, go through the the text of each individual podcast and edit it and maybe try and find some stuff that might be useful in the future uh, because I've been thinking about writing a book in fact, I've been thinking about that since I was about 13 years old. So, I'm now 96. I know I don't sound it. I only sound about 85, don't I? So, I'm, I've got this printer. I'm not sure what the name, what type of printer it is. But it's an okay one. It's not expensive, but it's not cheapy cheapy cheap cheap but it's that's a song isn't it cheap <laughs> cheapy cheap cheap song it's not like really cheap you know you don't pick it up and it just dissolves in your hand and onto the floor like sand it's not quite that rubbish but you know it's it's okay i think it's got a scanner on it but yeah you know, I don't, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not sure if I've used the scanner before. I might have done. But the good thing about this printer compared to the last time I owned a printer is we got Bluetooth now. So I can wirelessly send documents and print off um, instead of being connected because the last time I had a printer that I owned one was 
probably 2001. Yeah, 2001 was the last time I owned a printer. And yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. And back then I got a printer so that I could print out leaflets for my hypnosis business that I was starting. I think. I'm trying to think back. It's such a long time ago. That I can't quite remember. I do... Unless I had a printer in 2000s, I have a mild memory that I might have had printers in 2006. You know when you, you think about something and you, you think back and you have a vague recollection of a memory but it's not particularly clear enough to be certain that it's real um to be honest I wouldn't I wouldn't bet any money I'd bet your money on it, but I wouldn't bet my money. I'd bet all of your money that it's true because it'd make no difference <laughs> if I was wrong, but I wouldn't bet any of my own money. But I do have a recollection, I do. It's a real, quite a grainy, foggy memory of sitting on the floor printing things out but why would I print things out what was there to print out because back in 2006 oh I remember in 2004 I printed out leaflets for my free hypnosis service. I started a free chronic pain relief service where I was living at the time. And I printed out lots of leaflets, I think, just um, on pieces of paper, I'd have the same writing three times on an, like an A4 sheet, and then I'd cut it into three pieces, so that Although I'd have one piece of paper, I was actually able to make three leaflets out of that one piece of paper. In fact, I'm pretty sure that at one time I actually was able to get six small leaflets out of one A4 sheet of paper. But those leaflets were very, very small. Probably too small, really. Yeah, not really big enough. But in my memory, I used to go into bookshops and just go through various different books and 
just put leaflets into the books and then go into the libraries and put leaflets in the books so I'd spread a few hundred leaflets around the town by putting them into books and magazines and news agents and things like that but I'd yeah, I'd also used to go into coffee places and pubs and leave. Whenever I left, left, I would leave leaflets on as many tables as I could as I was leaving. And sometimes I'd, perhaps if I had always had blue tack with me, so I could stick a leaflet maybe on the toilet door to give people something to read or use if they run out of toilet paper so I've forgotten all about that yeah so that was one of my little things that I was doing so I used a printer for that but very noisy it's very 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 loud printer so the one I had in 2001 was loud and I don't think I had a printer previous to that so I think I've only ever owned three printers myself Although, although I have, <laughs> although I have used other printers because I had jobs where printers were part of that job. So I would take advantage of the printers and print out leaflets for myself. Uh, I did that in uh, a gift shop that I used to work in 2004. Admittedly though, I don't think, oh I remember, I remember. It wasn't so much printing out leaflets when I was there, but I would print out courses. So I would be doing online trainings and I would print out the course books. So they might be like a few hundred pages and I'd print them out on the printer. And when I worked in the call centre, I would print out leaflets as well. I wasn't supposed to. But what I would do is sometimes I would print stuff and other times I would do a photocopy I got caught a couple of times I got told off but so I, I made sure I didn't do it when that person was around but I didn't I didn't print many to be honest I didn't print many because in 2006, I ordered, I think it was about 50,000 leaflets, or they were postcards with adverts on, you know. Uh, so I think it was 50,000, and it cost me nearly a thousand pounds to do. So it might be more than 50,000, might be a hundred thousand, but pretty sure it was 50,000 leaflets uh, well postcards and I remember when they got delivered they took up most of my bedroom however and I don't I don't really understand of I mean I've I was told this years ago that <clears throat> if you put energy 
into something. If you really put positive energy and focus into something that you want to be successful, um, it has an effect. Like the energy seems to attract a degree of success. Now, I'm not really esoteric in nature. I'm more interested in fact. However, in 2004 and 2005, I had zero interest pretty much from anyone. No one was interested in my free pain relief service. I was advertising online. I even put adverts in the paper. And nobody was interested. I had a couple of people, I think, wanting to help with stop smoking or something like that. And I said, no. I didn't say no like that, but I'd said, uh, I might have said, no. Because I wanted to focus on pain relief. That was the only thing that I was interested in back then. Because once I, when I first started learning about hypnosis, I... I think the the thing that really grabbed my attention more than anything was the ability to relax and the ability to make changes but the ability to change how you physically feel so that you feel more comfort and are able to change any physical sensation that someone's experiencing so that you feel better you feel uh, more relaxed and um, releasing negativities and you know things like that so chronic pain relief was something that really excited me. So going forward from, and that was back in 1998. So it was really, it wasn't till 2006 that once I started handing out those, uh, the the new leaflets, the postcards that I had, and putting them into shop windows, post office windows, and spending, you know, a couple of hours every day after work, posting them through people's letterboxes, as well as the weekends doing it as well. Plus building a website and, you know, trying to promote it that way. Suddenly, I was getting phone calls from people and emails from people that were interested in using my free pain relief service. And... Admittedly, it was one of the most, one of the best times of my life. Because I was finally, finally doing something that I wanted to do. And I was finally putting myself out there and trying to make a difference and helping people and not charging because I wanted it to be a free service just as I still do 
everything I do is free. It still is. 16 years later, it's all free. Uh, all my podcasts you can download on my website for free. Or you can stream them for free. So everything I do is for free. There's no charge. And for the first time I felt quite good about myself. And it was going really well. I was seeing people for chronic pain and they were every 100% success rate. 100% success rate uh, as far as accomplishing what they wanted me to do relieving the pain relieving it so that they felt more relaxed in some cases removing the pain completely so you know it was uh, and and then part of that, especially with an elderly man that had extreme arthritis, one of the things that he had the biggest problem with, other than mobility, was sleeping. Because his legs would just twitch and he had um, like restless legs syndrome, I guess you would call it. After... A week or two of me visiting him in his home, because that's what I did to start with. I used to visit people in their home after work and at weekends. So I worked in a call centre uh, during the day. And he, the one thing he said is, and my main thing with him is, I was trying to relieve the chronic pain of his arthritis. But the relaxation was the thing that really had the benefit for him. Because he could sleep again. And his legs were calm again. Like they used to be. I actually had a, a newspaper article written about me seeing him. Um... I'm completely bald. <laughs> it's an awful picture of me. I mean, the picture of me at any time, apart from when I was a kid, because I used to be quite a cute little kid, but as an adult, I don't, you know, photographs. I remember my stepmom saying, why do you keep making a funny face when we take photographs? And I said, if you don't realise, stepmom, is I'm not, it's just my face. I'm not. Why do you keep screwing your face up? It's, it's, it's my face. That's just how I look. Stop being so rude. And I... Yeah, so that was quite good. And I was, as I said, I stopped printing. I stopped printing out the things, you know, leaflets, because I had 50,000... And I still, I ended up chucking away quite a few thousand of them when I moved. Because I moved in the end of ni uh, 2007 uh, to go to university to be to train as a counsellor. I had a degree course, three years full time and all that. I tried to continue the free pain relief service in this new area, but no one was interested. It was just, again, it was a little bit like 2004 and 2005 in the other place. And I posted thousands of leaflets through people's doors. And I still didn't get any response. Apart from a couple of people phoning me up and saying, uh, can you stop putting rubbish through my letterbox, please? It's a lot of effort from their part, isn't it? They could have just put it in the bin. They had to make a phone call just to complain.
Yes, but I did have a printer. I remember having a printer. So I'm not sure what I was printing off. I sometimes used to like to do research online. Uh, stuff about hypnosis or uh, NLP or whatever. And I just print off stuff and read it. Rather than reading it from the, s the screen. Yeah, I had quite a few quite a few things that I had printed and stored quite a collection of things like essays and things like that but I didn't have a printer of my own when I was at university I did have a laptop so what I would do is when it came to doing an essay why I didn't have a printer actually I know why I didn't have one because there wasn't enough room in that bedroom there wasn't enough room for a printer it would be a printer or a bed you know I couldn't have both just wasn't enough room so I would take my laptop or Oh, I know what I would do. I would save it into an email. Then I would log on to the computer in the library at university. And then I would send the document to the printer. And then I would print it off. And then put it into a folder or whatever the presentation requirement was for that particular piece of uh, work um, it depended I guess because the final dissertation had to be in an actual plastic folder if I'm correct for some reason don't really know why that was I guess because it was a much larger piece, piece <laughs> I was going to say piece of work, but it was mine, it was, I just chucked it together. I put pretty much very little, minimum effort. That is my, uh, that's my life's ambition is to put as little effort in as possible. It's uh, worked quite well so far. I'm very pleased with myself. In fact, if I had longer arms, I would actually pat myself on the back. So, I'm trying to think what other printers there's been. I used to, oh, I used to go into, this is back in probably 1999. January and there was this mobile phone shop and at that time that they were everywhere because mobile phones suddenly became affordable for the general public and um, before that it was only really really rich people people who worked in the city or drug dealers that would have mobile phones um, and <laughs> that's what I've been told that's what my nan told me, so I don't know if it's true. She had one. That's funny. She wasn't rich and she didn't work in the city. Maybe there's something. Oh, that's got me thinking. So um, I used to go in there into the... I used to go in there but I didn't use the printer but I did use the photocopier which was kind of like a printer really isn't it it prints off the photocopy so I would take in I think that's when I got a printer so I did it myself so um, I can't remember exactly but I think it was to promote myself as a hypnotist and I rented this room in a gym 
which is around the corner from where I lived. And it was downstairs, but it was it was a very poor decision on my part. But as far as poor decisions go, it's not even in the top 500. But it was a bit of a silly uh, place to rent. It didn't have the privacy that I would need. It was more expensive than I can afford, that I could afford at the time. And But I still did it. I painted it and advertised in the paper and gave leaflets out and, you know, but I got no, no response at all. And eventually I had to give up the room. But hey, they got a, they got a new, they got a freshly painted room. So that's not too bad for them, I guess. So that cost me probably quite a few hundred pounds uh, in paint and in rent that was pointless plus all the yeah probably over a thousand pound I probably spent on that adventure which came to nothing but then I, I got involved in the internet in 2000 I discovered I didn't discover the internet because obviously it was around before then but I wasn't I like the internet, so I, you know I used to use it. Ninety eight, but it's very slow. It's very, 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 very slow. But I love, I liked it. And then I started to love it. And then in two thousand, I started to. Or want to learn how to make web pages and I devoted a huge amount of time learning to code learning how to make web pages from scratch using HTML um, in notepad <laughs> and then just it was Again, one of my fondest times was doing that. I really enjoyed it. And I learned how to, I, I bought lots of books. And I learned how to build websites. Now, they weren't very uh, high end. They weren't like brilliantly designed websites, but... I enjoyed it. I really did. So that was useful for uh, 2006. Well, 2004. I had a, a website called helpwithpain.co.uk but I didn't get hardly any visitors to that. And then in 2006 I had a website called what was it called? Freepainrelief.co.uk And I built both of those websites myself from scratch. And they were very basic, very basic websites, but they did the job. And I think, although I didn't get huge traffic, I think I got about 50,000 visits in the first year of that website. I don't know where they came from because I don't think there was that many people in the town I was living. I guess people came from different places and because I was also posting uh, recordings, because I started doing recordings and videos at that time as well. So maybe because I was doing that, I was sharing the website and also jasonnewland.com at the same time. So I was kind of sharing both of those websites. And they were almost, in some ways, mirrors of each other at the beginning. Mirrors. But since then, I kind of 
can't think of any time that I've really used printers apart from this printer here and it's sitting over there well, it's not sitting I mean it's there it doesn't have a bum but it's just there on the table it's got its own little space and I guess my intention is to do what I did before because I did print out lots of transcripts and then it was just a bit of a mess and I ended up chucking them out so I will be looking at maybe because I'm trying I'm trying to get myself more organized uh, I've got these desks and just all you know it's all kind of spread out nice I'm trying to organize myself and you know I've been transcribing for the last three months uh, using an AI app that helps so I will eventually have all of my podcasts transcribed and written down or you know printed out on paper and then I'll be able to look through it and sort of choose different bits different parts that might be useful for a book or two that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing but I think my problem is I'm worried that if I write a book that it will be too interesting for people because I'm I'm just such a such an interesting person and I don't know I'm mean, gonna try and do these boring things but you know clearly it is kind of edge edge of your seat stuff isn't it really in reality um but I'm gonna keep trying to be boring if I can Although it is, it's very difficult for someone like me, who's natu <laughs> naturally, um, you know, very bright and uh, very loud. And um, I am almost, I mean, you can tell from my voice, I'm al almost like a peacock. So... But that's, that's about all I can think of when it comes to printers. So, thanks for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And if you have any suggestions of uh, an object that I can, you know, a boring object that I can talk about, then please let me know. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.